So you made it past your GCSEs and now you're doing your A-levels. As with any new experience, you're probably feeling a lot of emotions, mostly anxiety, but also maybe a bit of excitedness. Don't let these emotions overtake you though. If you want to have a successful A-level journey, then it's crucial that you avoid these mistakes that most people fall into. Also, I made a new Instagram account that I'll be posting short form content on. And so if you're interested, here it is. And it's also in the description. The last thing you want to do is to make a mistake that costs you a grade or even two and ruins your chances of getting into that uni you really want. And the first of these mistakes is not understanding the studying methodology of A-levels. A-levels are basically just GCSEs, but on steroids. If you do well in your GCSEs, considering you actually studied, then there's a good chance you'll also do well in your A-levels. That being said, don't let your GCSE results delude you. I knew many people that took GCSE further math and they were getting easy nines. But then when they started their A-levels, all of a sudden they're getting C's and D's, not in further math, in normal math. And why is that? Well, for GCSEs, you could sometimes rely on your intelligence and just a bit of studying to get decent grades. But in A-levels, no matter how smart you are, if you don't put in the work, you will be found out. And so it's important to have this in the back of your mind throughout the start of your A-level journey. It will help you avoid slacking and thinking that just a 20 minute session where you read a textbook before the unit test will get you an A. It won't, you'll need to do way more work than that. After understanding the differences between GCSEs and A-levels in terms of the difficulty of the content, it's then important to finalize your future plans as early as possible. Of course, there's gonna be some people that literally have no idea what they wanna do in the future, but I'd say the majority of you watching right now have a general plan. Based on that plan, try to finalize as many details as you can. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do, but I know that it's going to be something related to engineering or computer science. I'd first look at the subjects that I take and then ask myself, do they fulfill the uni requirements? If I'm taking four subjects, I'd ask myself, is it worth the risk of being overwhelmed and potentially getting a lower grade in each subject, or should I just take three instead? I'd also look at my future unis. If they're in different countries, I'd ask myself, how are they going to differ in terms of their application process, and how can I prepare for them? There's no downside to answering all of these questions as soon as possible. The mistake I made is that I left these questions unanswered for way too long, and that resulted in the beginning of year 13 being extra stressful for no reason. Because not only did the content jump in difficulty from year 12, but now I also had to worry about predicted grades and university applications and essays and so on. Instead, try to be someone who looks in the long term and then sacrifices now for the future. If you plan your future as much as possible before year 13, trust me, you're gonna look back and thank yourself. Now, another mistake people make in their A-level journey is that they don't seek advice from the right people. It can be tempting to just talk to your friends about your plans and then ask them for advice. But you need to understand one thing, and that is they know just as much as you. They haven't been to uni, or worked a full-time job, or even done their A-levels yet. They're just relaying advice that they might have heard, or they're just waffling. Instead, I would seek advice from people who actually have lived experience. Your school university advisor, or anyone that's currently doing the degree that you want to do, or even your teachers. The list is endless. Just make sure that they're not waffling, and they actually have lived experience. Because this is your future we're talking about, not what you're going to have for lunch. Good advice is essential. And once you have the right advice, try to start your uni application as soon as possible. Even if it's just a rough draft of your personal statement, if you start it in the middle of year 12, and then every week you add an improvement or two, by January of year 13, when you're actually applying, your personal statement is going to be top notch. And you also bypass all of the stress that your friends are going through, trying to finish their personal statements before the deadline. Now, finally, I'd make sure that I have a good routine developed as soon as possible. Now, if you remember, our first point was that A-levels are just GCSEs, but on steroids. And so if you think that you had a GCSE routine that was actually quite effective, then we could use it, but with some modification. A-levels are going to be harder, and so you'll need to dedicate more time per week for studying. Also, to help you out with your personal statement, you might want to dedicate some time per week just researching whatever subject you might study at uni. For example, if I want to study history, then maybe I'll dedicate some time to reading a book about the Renaissance or something like that. Your routine has to be challenging but realistic. You can't make it, oh I'll study 12 hours a day or I'll never go out on the weekend again. Try to find a balance while at the same time being at the top end of what you think is challenging. 